Lord, once again, we ask that in this moment, your Holy Spirit would be here to guide us and direct us, inspire us. We ask that the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts and minds together would be pleasing and acceptable, Lord, in, in your sight. Lord, you're our rock. You're our redeemer. Amen. Have you ever heard of Kickstarter? I'm, I'm proud of myself that at my age, I, I knew know about Kickstarter. Kickstarter is an internet company that helps projects get funded that have a somewhat narrow focus or a narrow clientele. In other words, if you have a product or a project, but it has kind of a real niche uh, interest, something that not a lot of people would be interested in, but there would be a, a dedicated core of folks who would want to buy it. This is how it's funded. Somebody puts something up there. I want to produce this product. I want to have this book or this movie or, or this song or something. And people can browse through this. Yes, I want that. I want that book. I want that song. I want that product. And pledge to fund it. And then if enough people say, yes, I want one, I will pledge to fund it, then the project get, is, gets a green light and they go ahead and produce it. But it's always for something that's be sort of obscure, that has a very sort of narrow focus. Um, here are some of the things that actually have been funded on Kickstarter. Uh, for example, one thing that was funded on Kickstarter, enough people wanted it, was a giant inflatable head of Lionel Richie. Uh, that was fully funded. Enough people said, yes, I want that. I want a big inflatable head of Lionel Richie. Um, an edible cup. In other words, a cup that you could drink the drink and then eat the cup. That was, doesn't that sound delicious? Um, drink the drink and then eat the cup. That was also fully funded on Kickstarter. And here's one I was particularly interested in, the Jesus Grill. The Jesus Grill. Because you can make a grilled cheese sandwich and the grill will put an imprint of the face of Jesus on the sandwich. Thus, it is called the Jesus Grill. And see, these are things that if you put them in the stores, they probably would, you put one in every Walmart, it's just not going to make it. But enough people want the Jesus Grill or the giant head of Lionel Richie that it gets funded. And, the, and all kinds of obscure, very narrowly focused things get, get funded there. But the process is once it is fully funded, then they start the production of it. And they have to wait until they know if they're going to have enough money before they start producing it. So the lag time from when you fund it to when you get it is sometimes a year. I pledged to support, paid to get this book by an artist that I had met. And I paid my money and said, yes, I'll buy the book and I'm going to support it. And it got fully funded. And I got the book two years later. <laughs> two years later, it arrived in the mail. And I'm like, what is this? <laughs> you know, because two years later, I'd totally forgotten about it. I'm like, what? where'd this go? Oh, yeah. I remember they promised to send this to me if I funded it way back two years ago. Oh, yeah, I remember that now. And here it is two years later. But I'd forgotten about the promise to send me the book. I I'd forgotten about the whole thing. Now, I bring that up because the coming of Jesus is a little bit like that because a lot of people had forgotten about the promise of God to send a Savior. A lot of people had forgotten about the promises of God to send a Savior because they seem so, so far back. And, and, and indeed, the promises of God to redeem the world, to rescue the world from sin, to send a Savior, really start all the way back in the book of Genesis. You know, the coming of Jesus doesn't just happen. It comes as a fulfillment of God's promises that stretch all the way back to the book of Genesis. If you go back to the book of Genesis, you meet Abraham. Abraham, the father of Israel, the father of the, the children of Israel. After you read those stories that are sort of the prehistory stories, the Adam and Eve stories and the Noah story, then you get to this one man, Abraham. 
And God, he says he's a righteous man, a man of faith. And God says to Abraham and his wife, Sarah, I'm going to bless you. I am going to make your descendants into a nation. And then we read this promise back in Genesis 12. God says this to Abraham. I will make you into a great nation. I'll bless you. I'll make your name great. And you'll be a blessing. I'll bless those who bless you. And whoever curses you, I'll curse. And here's the key part. All peoples on earth will be blessed through you. All people on earth will be blessed through you. Not just part of the earth. The whole planet will be blessed through Abraham's descendants. And so we read about Abraham, and he and his wife Sarah are old when they finally have this child, Isaac. Well past childbearing years, but they finally have this child of promise, Isaac. And they name him Isaac, which means laughter, because they're so old when they have him. And Isaac then has twin boys, Jacob and Esau, and the promise continues through Jacob, and Jacob has 12 sons, and they become the names of the 12 tribes of Israel. And by the end of the book of Genesis, the family has grown to about 70 people, and famine strikes the land, and Joseph has become very powerful in Egypt. That's a whole other story, but the whole family moves to Egypt to escape the famine. And that's how the book of Genesis ends, with this family of 70 people, the descendants of Abraham, living in Egypt. And then you turn the page, and 400 years have passed, and the family has grown from 70 into hundreds and thousands, tens of thousands of people over 400 years. The descendants of Abraham is now a huge multitude of people, tens of thousands of descendants of Abraham in Egypt, slaves in Egypt in bondage in Egypt, the children, the descendants of Abraham. And you know, God, through Moses, delivers them, plagues and all this, delivers them first into the desert and finally into the land of Canaan, into the promised land. But during that time of Moses, God keeps renewing the covenant with the children of Abraham. He gives them the Ten Commandments. He gives them the laws for life. And He gives them promises. Renews that promise that started with Abraham. And here's what, it, here's what God says to the people of Israel in, in the time of Moses. He says, although the whole earth is mine, you, you, the descendants of Abraham, you will be for me a kingdom of priests and a holy nation. You will be for me a kingdom of priests and a holy nation. And this is where we get this idea that Israel is the the chosen people, God's special possession, chosen to bless the earth, to to bring God's word to the whole earth, to, to be ministers to the whole planet, to be a holy nation, a nation set apart to bless the planet. And that's the original idea of what it means to the the chosen people, chosen to be a blessing, chosen to bless the earth. And we start reading, the whole Old Testament is the story of this family of Abraham, these descendants of Abraham, these chosen people. And they have continual conflict with their neighbors, and they're tempted to fall into idolatry and sin and, and, and they have ups and downs, and God will deliver them, and there's battles and wars, and you read all this, and, and the people say, we want a king, we need a king, and God lets them have a king, Saul, and he's a lousy king, and God says, no, we're going to pick a new king, and the new king is David. And David is not a perfect man by any stretch of the imagination. David does some, some bad stuff. <laughs> But his heart is a heart, it says his heart is after God. He's a man after God's heart. He passionately loves God. Even when he sins and falls down, he passionately throws himself on God's mercy. And God blesses David. And God makes a promise to David. And this promise to David is found in 2 Samuel 7. Through the prophet Samuel, God says this to David. Your house... In other words, your, your line, your lineage, your ancestor, I mean, your, your descendants. Your house and your kingdom will endure forever before me. Your throne will be established forever. So the throne of David, the line of David, the ancestors of David, this is an eternal throne, which is a big promise. 
an eternal throne, your throne will be established forever. That's a, that's a big promise. But God says your, your descendants are going to sit on an eternal throne. Well, David has a successful reign as king, and his son Solomon becomes king after him, and Solomon is wise and powerful and wealthy and expands the borders of Israel to the largest they have ever been and the largest they will ever be. And then Solomon dies and things start to go haywire after that. His son is a terrible king. Solomon's son Rehoboam alienates a lot of the people and so the kingdom splits into two halves. The northern half rejects David's line Israel, the southern half, Judea, keeps, keeps a descendant of David on the throne. And you got this divided kingdom, north and south. And sometimes they are at war with each other, and they're at war with other nations, and they have good kings and bad kings, except most of the kings are bad.